Google Bard powered by Gemini Pro on the left, Bing Chat powered by GPT-4 on the right. Particularly the difference in the coding example is pretty surprising. There are chapters in the timeline, so skip to the topics that you are most interested in. We'll start with some basketball trivia. Who won the NBA championship in 2023? Who was the leading scorer in game four? And how many rebounds did he have? For the Bard answer, it says Denver Nuggets won the NBA championship. That's correct. Defeating Miami Heat. So that's also correct. But it incorrectly said that Nikola Jokic was the leading scorer in game four. That is not correct. GPT-4 had the answer correct. It correctly said Denver Nuggets won the championship. And it said the leading scorer in game four was Aaron Gordon with 27 points. That is correct. And also says he had seven rebounds. And even gives you additional information that that was not the most re rebounds that Nikola Jokic had more rebounds. So overall, GPT-4 clear win here. Next, I have a finance investing question. I can invest $1,000 each month. I am 30 years old and I'm planning to retire when I'm 65 years old. What is the best way to invest this money? All right, let's start them both at the same time. Bard, here is Bing. They're both thinking. Each of them start giving an answer in a few seconds. So Bard gives you a pretty nice answer. It says to start early, invest regularly, diversify investments, rebalance your portfolio regularly, be patient. And here are specific account, uh, options, retirement accounts, good IRAs, mutual funds, real estate, crypto, questionable. It gives you pretty good links here. So these are pretty big websites in the finance space. Bing Chat is significantly slower here. So Bart definitely wins on speed on this one. Uh, but it also gives you good answers. So 401k, that's a good idea, IRAs, index funds. So here actually, uh, GPT-4 told me to put it in index funds, which I think is uh, really important. I don't think it says anywhere here in BART to put in index funds. No, it's just mutual funds. Some mutual funds can be actually really bad because they can have really high cost. They skim off one to 2%. So index funds are generally uh, the best solution for investing. So I would say uh, GPT-4 still gave me a better answer. Uh, so I would give the win to GPT-4 again. Next, we'll do a little geography question. I'm standing in Manhattan. What is the distance from where I'm standing to Los Angeles? So let's start them at the same time. Submit, submit. So it goes to Google Maps and it's thinking there. GPT-4 also pretty slow. Um, it's starting to generate. Uh, Bart is still searching through Google Maps. It's taking a pretty long time. If I was doing this manually, I would uh, be able to do that probably quicker. So it tells you that the distance is about 2,400 miles. Um, it tells you which way to take a road, how long it will take, 41 hours. And it also starts giving you directions. Okay, so that, that's a good answer. But I'll have a little bit of twist for that. Um, GPT-4 is a lot more concise. It does not give you the directions, which is fine because I didn't really ask for them. So I would say both of these answers are good. Oh, here's a little interesting thing. It says Google Maps query unsuccessful. So it did not uh, get to go to Google Maps. But let's give this a little bit of a twist. Both Gemini Pro and GPT-4 assumed that I was talking about Manhattan, New York City, which is a really good assumption because when somebody says Manhattan, I would say 99% of the people will think of Manhattan in New York City, but there's also Manhattan in uh, Kansas, a small town. So let's give it a little twist and I write, I meant Manhattan K KS, which is the uh, two letter code for Kansas. And let's see what they both do. So it goes to Google Maps again. It's probably gonna be unsuccessful. There is some uh, problem. Oh, this time it got me something. The distance from Manhattan, Kansas to Los Angeles is 1500 miles along route I-70. All right, no problem. Um, GPT-4 gave you a little bit more human answer because it says, oh, I see, in that case, and it changes it. So I think uh, that's uh, nice uh, because here it just uh, gives you kind of cold answers, like just gives you the information. But here it gives a little bit of a human touch that's like, oh, I see what you mean now. And uh, again, it gives you correct answer. So about the same slight edge to GPT-4. Let's try a little science question. Which one is heavier, the Eiffel Tower or the Great Pyramid in Giza? Explain your reasoning. I think it's really important to say explain your reasoning because I think the answer is pretty clear that it's gonna be the pyramid, but I wanna see what is the reasoning behind it. Bart says the Great Pyramid in Giza is significantly heavier. Here's why. It says the pyramid is 6 million tons, Eiffel Tower is 7,000 tons. It talks about the construction materials, volume, density, and a few additional factors. Really good answer, no problems there. As far as GPT-4, it says Great Pyramid in Giza is heavier. 
Uh, so this one says 5.75 million tons. And this one says 6 million tons. So about the same. And it gives you a lot uh, shorter answer. So in this case, I would say BART is more verbose. Uh, but GPT-4's answer is just as good. And it also gives you links, which I really like. And you can learn more. So as far as quality of answer, they're both great. Uh, I do like the links in GPT-4, but let's call this one a tie. Now let's try a short coding exercise. Write code in Python that would calculate the area of a triangle from the length of its three sides. In the code, ask for the three sides as A, B, and C entered sequentially. Both Gemini Pro and GPT-4 uh, correctly identified that you have to use the Heron's formula to calculate the area of the triangle, but I see a problem in the code generated by Gemini Pro. So I pasted each code into PyCharm. So here's the Gemini code and here's the GPT-4 code. So let's run it. So when we run the Gemini code, it just runs the whole script. So it doesn't ask me for the sides of the triangle. And that's because it's not in the code. So it has the correct formula to calculate the area of the triangle, but it just picks values for A, B, and C. So three, four, and five. It doesn't ask for those sides from me. So it's not a functional code, but GPT-4 code, let's run that. So let's run GPT-4 and it says, enter the length of the side A. So let's do three and then four and five. And then it correctly calculates that the area of the triangle is six. So a huge uh, win for GPT-4 in this case. Now let's ask a math question. Suppose n is an integer. Prove that if n squared is even, then n is also even. Now neither of them are particularly fast. So here's a proof, proved by the contrapositive. All right, so Bart is pretty much done. Uh, and that looks uh, accurate, so that's good. And uh, Bing Chai with GPT-4 is pretty slow. Uh, it does come up with the contrapositive proof. Both are correct, but the BART with the Gemini Pro was much, much faster than GPT-4. Now let's try a biology slash pharma slash medical question. What is halicin? Would it help with a fungal infection? Explain your reasoning. So halicin is an antibiotic that was uh, found by using AI. BART with Gemini Pro correctly identified that it has uh, antibiotic. Um, it also talks about antifungal activity. It says, while Holocene's primary focus is the antibacterial properties, some research suggests it might also have antifungal activity. Uh, that's interesting. It would be good if it gave me uh, a reference for that. All right, so that looks like a pretty good answer. Let's see here. Halicin, it was an experimental drug. It was an enzyme inhibitor, but then they found that it was a broad-spectrum antibiotic. Halicin would not help with fungal infection because it was designed to target bacteria. I don't think it was really designed. It was just found to be antibiotic. So that's not really correct. Um, fungi and bacteria are different types of organisms. So it goes into kind of uh, explaining how antibiotics work. It gives you the mechanism of how this particular antibiotic works because it's a novel antibiotic. So that's good. Uh, and it says uh, fungi have different mechanisms of regulating uh, pH potential. So that's how halicin works. So I think this is most likely correct. So let's ask Bart for the reference. Can you give reference for the antifungal activity? Because I actually am not aware of that. I need to uh, dig more into uh, halicin and see if it actually works on fun fungi as well. I imagine it does not. So it says, unfortunately, due to ongoing limited research on halicin's antifungal activity, there isn't a single definite reference I can provide. This paper briefly mentions that halicin has broad spectrum activity against wide range of pathogens including some fungal species like Cryptococcus neoformans. However, it doesn't go into specific research of mechanisms relative to antifungal properties. Okay, so this is really interesting because I would say GPT-4 answer is a lot more logical. That's the answer I would give because halicin is a compound that was uh, used as an enzyme inhibitor, but then they found it was antibiotic and it goes into the mechanism on how that works. So that's a very logical answer. And also the reasoning is correct, but maybe that's uh, not the best answer because if really these two publications show that it has some antifungal activity, then that's something I didn't know. And for uh, doing literature research, this would actually be more useful for me because everything that GPT-4 gave me, I already knew, but I was not aware of these two uh, uh, references. So I would say a tie. I'll have to uh, go uh, more deep dive into this. So maybe I'll make another video about how these two work for um, more scientific uh, topics. So if you're interested in that, uh, make sure you subscribe. And now let's have some fun with this. Can you create some really good Chuck Norris jokes? I would like to hear original jokes, 
not jokes found on the internet. And that's really important because I don't want to just search the web and just give me some random jokes that found on the web. So let's see how creative both of these are. So uh, here are some Chuck Norris jokes. It gave me 10, 11 jokes, okay? GPT-4 is still working. So I would say on speed, Bard with the Gemini Pro is definitely much faster than uh, Bing Chat with GPT-4. But it could be that because uh, Bard was pretty useless before and nobody was using it, so there's not much load. A lot of people are using Bing Chat with GPT-4. So maybe it's just uh, a question of how much each one is being used. And if Bard with Gemini Pro proves to be uh, really useful, maybe a lot more people will start using it and the speed will kind of equalize. So Bard with Gemini Pro gave me 11 jokes and uh, GPT-4 gave me uh, five jokes. They're actually both uh, very good responses. A lot of these are original jokes. Some of these out of the 11 are not original, but generally a very good response. I think this is the best I've got so far from any large language model. So let me go through them real quick and I'll show you uh, which one I think are the most funny. The first one says, Chuck Norris doesn't have dreams. He has premonitions of things that will happen. Uh, I think that is new. I don't think it's that funny, but that is a new joke. The second one is when Chuck Norris uh, throws a boomerang, it doesn't come back. It knows better. Uh, also, that's new. Uh, I did not find it on the internet. Uh, Chuck Norris can slam a revolving door. That is definitely not new. That is known. Uh, the next one is Chuck Norris can count to infinity twice. That's also on the internet, so not new. The fifth one is probably my favorite. Chuck Norris doesn't need to look both ways before crossing the street. The street looks both ways for him. Uh, that's new. I did not find that anywhere. Uh, six, Chuck Norris can win a staring contest against the statue. That is a slight modification of a known joke. Chuck Norris can kill two birds with one snow. That's also kind of like a modification of uh, one that's already out there. Uh, Chuck Norris doesn't get paid if he gets allowances. I don't think that's funny. The ninth one is pretty funny. Chuck Norris can eat a bowl of alphabet soup and spit out a complete sentence. I did not find that one anywhere. I think that one is pretty funny. Uh, 10, Chuck Norris doesn't play chess. He plays checkers with the Grim Reaper. That's okay. And uh, the last one, the bonus joke is actually pretty good. And also, I did not find that one anywhere. Uh, it says, what does Chuck Norris put on his cereal? Fear. And here are the jokes from GPT-4. Chuck Norris doesn't need a mask. He can breathe in space. So that's novel. Uh, that's actually pretty good. The next one is uh, Chuck Norris can divide by zero. He just gets infinity. Uh, that is a, a known joke. So that's not novel. Chuck Norris can win a game of chess in one move. He just stares at the board until it surrenders. That's new, but I don't think that's particularly funny. Chuck Norris can make a snowman out of sand. He just kicks it hard enough. That is novel. It's pretty funny. And the last one is Chuck Norris can speak every language in the world. He just says his name. Uh, I could not see it anywhere, but uh, I don't think it's particularly funny. As far as the jokes go, I would give a win to the Bard output. It gave me more jokes. I guess uh, GPT-4 would keep giving me jokes if I asked for more. But I think uh, the jokes that Bard gave me uh, with the Gemini Pro engine behind it were much uh, better. More of them were novel. And uh, most importantly, some of the new ones were pretty funny. So win for uh, Bard with Gemini Pro in this case. In summary, I would say GPT-4 is still better than uh, Bard powered by Gemini Pro. Uh, overall, I would say the answers were a little bit better with GPT-4. But I think BARD uh, is much closer now than it was before. When I tested it before, BARD was really, really bad when it was uh, powered by Palm 2. So they definitely got closer, but uh, there is a little bit of a hype. I would say GPT-4 is still better than the Pro version. Maybe the Ultra version is better, but these responses, definitely GPT-4 wins. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.